Alrighty guys and welcome back to more Tales of Berseria. Almost slipped up as episode of five. But right now what we want to do is eat some food really quick. We're gonna have Aizen uh, cook us something special right now. We're gonna have him make Berserker's Palmier and uh Notify Earth Elemental Damage. 5% chance of activating. Let's get that good Eat up. Stuff. It's the chef's recommendation. Delicious. So now by making that, we get a skit. So we're going to go ahead and watch it. Wow, Aizen. Your palmiers are every bit as delicious as the ones you can buy from a baker. It takes a lot of time and work to get that good. They say it takes three years to master caramel custard, but eight for palmier. I never figured you for someone who would be so passionate about baked sweets. What? So just because I'm a pirate, I can't bake? No, I didn't mean it like that. It's just that these are so good, and you made them with such perfect attention to detail. My sister likes palmiers. Ah, uh, and she... Sounds like there's a story, if you don't mind us asking. You're right, there is. Back when she and I were living together, we went out to a human town where we discovered palmiers for the first time. My sister had never tasted sweets made by humans before, and she fell in love with palmiers at the first bite. After that, whenever I went into town, I made sure to pick some up for her. You picked them up for her? You mean you two didn't keep going there together? Being among humans puts Malakim in contact with malevolence. With my sister being prone to illness and injury, I wouldn't take her long to such places. When she be acting up or not sleeping or something, I promised to get her palmiers, and she'd calm right down. That sounds like how me and my brother used to be. After a while, I just figured that if she likes them that much, I might as well learn how to make them myself. Plus, that way, you wouldn't expose yourself to as much malevolence. After I made them enough times, I got the hang of it. They started turning out really well. But one time when I was baking them, the oven suddenly spewed fire out and badly burned my sister. Damn. It was all my fault, and stupid, clueless me didn't even know why at the time. Crazy thing is, after I did what I could for her burns and put her to bed, she told me she wanted to eat the palmiers I'd made. They were burned to a crisp, but she ate those pastries like nothing was wrong. Then she smiled and told me to keep on making them. That's just like a younger sibling. <sighs> He just wanted to do something for his sister, only to be confronted by how bad his curse is. That'd be really hard to deal with. She must realize by now what's going on with Aizen, right? Maybe she thought that he'd leave if she ever let on that she knew. And he left because he thought he could spare her from learning the truth. And then he gets turned into a dragon, and then in the next game, we promise Edna in the next game to fix Isis Dragon State, but we don't actually go on a quest or do anything about it. We just fucking kill him. <laughs> that must be the Reaper's curse at work through the plot. <laughs> All right, let's watch this southern bit. We've loaded everything bound for Helaviz. With that much trade, I doubt anyone will suspect us. Any idea who can give us cover for docking? Not anyone in particular, but recently the power and influence of the Helaviz Fisherman's Guild has caught my eye. The Fisherman's Guild, huh? Let's bring them some extra relief supplies. Fuel, drink, and as for the drink... Twelve-year-old Amber Draft. The sailors of Elevis have an eye for the stuff. You heard that from Dial, I take it. He's got a sharp eye. He took a bottle in payments, but I say we turn a blind eye to it. We thought we were the best at this kind of thing, but having him around has been a real eye-opener. Okay, but tell him if he takes a second, he'll pay for it. Eye for an eye. Aye, aye. I'll keep an eye on him so that he doesn't sneak off with another bottle. <laughs> dial. Dial. Rep dial. I just love how they just kill your boy eyes and all. They made him like one of the best characters of this game to try to make up what they did to him in Zestaria Die. It's, it's outright disgraceful what they did to him in the second one. Edna basically joins you because you promise her that you're gonna look for a damn cure to, you know, purify a dragon. But it never happens. You never look for a fucking cure. And that's like another thing that pissed me off with Zestaria was that you don't look, you don't keep your promise to Edna at all. You didn't even look for it. And you just 
automatically assume we gotta kill your brother. There's no other way. You never looked. You never looked for a fucking way. You just assumed that there was no way to fucking do it. And then the anime completely changed that. I don't want to spoil the anime, but the, the anime completely did something different, which is insane. But here we go. We're gonna go ahead and watch this next skit. The supplies are loaded. We can make for Helavis whenever you want. That was fast. If we weren't hard workers, we wouldn't be sailors. <laughs> Eleanor! <laughs> it's Armika! Oh, what's wrong, Kamoana? She, uh, she said she had a dream about her mom. When mommy saw me, she said I looked scary. That she didn't want a scary little girl like me. <laughs> Your mother would never say that, sweetheart. But how can you be sure? Well, uh, how do I put it? I know because I know. You're just lying to make me feel better. <laughs> She's so ugly, we had to block it with a wing. <laughs> Aw, come on, Don't cry. Those wings make it look cool, but it fucks up some of the cutscenes, dude. I... <laughs> Oh, this is the part I hate about little kids. That's exactly what a little kid would sound like, my dear. I'm not a little kid! I hate you, Velvet! I hate you! That's right. Let it all out. Stop it! Stop it! Mommy! I saw my mommy! She didn't want me! <laughs> Like 90% of the other parents in the world. I mean, what? She managed to cry herself to sleep. They're not rational creatures. Sometimes you just gotta let them cry it out. You seem used to it. I guess you could say that. Luffy usually kept himself together when he was younger. But when he was really little, he had times like this every now and then. Ah. And on that note, let's take off all we can. My liege, Dial, I leave Kamoana in your care. I'll do what I can, but kids as sweet and honest as her are harder to deal with than corrupt bureaucrats. <laughs> An outlaw prince and a talking lizard are no replacement for a mother. Yo, God, it's so ugly that they had to completely block her face off with another character's wings in the cutscene. <laughs> I do hope Kamalana isn't crying anymore. Yeah. Shush. I can't believe we made it all the way back here. How long is it going to be before you send in another exorcist to replace Lady Teresa? With these demons clamoring at our gates, none of us feel safe anymore. You have our deepest sympathies, but we were sent here on a different mission. That's what the last exorcist who came here said before leaving for the north. <laughs> what could be up there that's worth all that attention? Up the north, huh? Surely we're not all being punished by the Abbey for what happened with Medissa, are we? Medissa? That is not the case. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have business to attend to. Okay, Fumi. That's Fumi. That's Amanda. <laughs> the voice actor for that NPC is Amanda something. So the exorcists are just passing through town and heading straight north. Odd. Oh! We're back in Hello. Oh, yeah, you know what we can do? We can finally get our aerial recovery. Oh, my God. Still didn't get the new item. Show him how I freed. All right, so it looks like we got a event here. I want to know if we actually have any other events that we can actually do right now. So here we go. We need to actually go ahead and for sure go get that aerial recovery. Uh, ever since the calamity showed up, everything's calamity. just gone to pot, I say. 
Calamity? What do you mean? I mean the demon who barged in and made a mess of our fair city. She's a nasty creature of pure evil, with an arm that eats anything that gets in her way. Uh -oh. Haven't you heard of her? The Calamity's been rampaging across the whole kingdom, not just here. Scant few have seen her and survived. Huh. You don't say. After the Calamity raised our ships and our port, the shipping guild fell apart and our trade routes got poached by other ports. It's bad. The town relies on trade to make ends meet. People are abandoning the city, and our streets are no longer safe! Not to mention the demon blight spreading again! Just the other day, a little kid turned into a demon. Just like that! What a world! What a world! Wow. What have the exorcists been doing during all of this? Well, Lady Teresa was in charge of this region, but she came up short against the Calamity, and got a fat demotion for her troubles. Mm. Several new exorcists have been reassigned here, but once they arrive, they all traipse right off to the ruins up north. This has to be Medissa's fault. If she hadn't gone and done something so stupid... Medissa... That's enough. This isn't something for outsiders to know. You're right. Sorry. <sighs> I'm really worried about what's going to come of this town. A fat demotion. <laughs> Sounds like Hellavis isn't what it used to be these days. We need to ask around and find out more about what's going on here. Agreed. Especially regarding the Abbey and those ruins. I'm also curious about this Medissa woman. The ruins part makes sense, since the Earth Pulse Point might be there. But why do you care who Medissa is? Just a hunch. Something tells me she's worth looking into. You're not gonna look into this calamity chick? She sounds like a real terror. Yeah, I think I'll pass. I already know plenty about what makes her tick. Medissa. Spoiled? Are you alright, Madam Eleanor? Don't let those people get you down. I'm fine. Thank you for your concern. Uh, but could you not do that thing where you blow air on me to dry my tears? Alright, I'll just pass then that won't be necessary either <laughs> got him but really things are in a terrible state the town burned the guild ruined the abbey all but gone it won't be a functioning port for some time you can't fault them for being upset they had it real good here until we came along those helivisians were like spoiled children how so helivis was once a tiny fishing village the bountiful northern seas provided plenty enough fish to sustain their trade. But Flamestone gave them an easy way to get rich. And once they got a taste, they abandoned their old craft. And now they're paying the price. But I've heard that the cooling temperature has covered half the northern sea in ice drift, making fishing much more difficult. Uh, but the drifting ice carries tiny organisms, enriching the waters where it melts. The fish should be more plentiful than ever. I suppose you may have a point. We're ones to talk after what we did, but taking the easy path, then complaining as soon as it gets hard, that seems... Spoiled, yes. <laughs> you said it, Luffy said. I think my appetite's getting a little overindulgent, too. <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Just means you're healthy. Giant squid come to these waters in this season. Should I ask Benwick to fish some up? Yeah, and some normal octopuses, too. <laughs> Chatterista, a calamity twice over, eh? Let's go ahead and watch it. This calamity is us. The Lord isn't of the it? Calamity. Well, we've been waging war with the Abbey everywhere we go, and now we're about to take it to a new level. If we pull the next Therian off of the Earth Pulse point, it'll likely be Kamoana's village all over again. The same devastation? Ooh. I wonder if there's something worse than Calamity that they can call us! This is no laughing matter. People turn into demons in part due to their own malevolence. It's not like they're entirely innocent. But if there's someone out there who's being forced to act as Inominat's mouth, like Kamawana was, isn't saving them the right thing to do? I cannot argue with that, but... You don't have to worry. I'm the one who will devour the barrier. And I'm the one who will do what needs to be done. It's kind of crazy that there's no way to change. <laughs> no way. Oh, you got malevolence? Oh, you turned into a demon? Nope. No way to turn back. <laughs> like, that's OD. That's OD. There's no way to turn back. All your potential gone. Like, it's OD. Have a 
absolutely nothing is going all right. It's because of the calamity. They fight against the Abbey so they can be gutted? The demon attacks have ground trade to a halt. But people are slowly starting to fish again. Are you a fisherman too? I. This town got swept up in the recent trade boom. But back when I was a young lad, this was a fishing port through and through. Ever since the shipping guild took over the docks, all of us fishermen got muscled out. Making this a commercial port has helped the town grow. But a lot of people weren't so happy with the guild. It's too bad everyone couldn't just work together. Once money gets involved, people change. That's true no matter what age you live in. The people know it's the ones making the money who lead the charge. But we follow anyway. It's human nature. I hope everyone changes their minds once we start rebuilding. But who knows what will happen. Alright, let's keep going. Probably some more sub-events over here. Yep. Damn, there's a few events we have to watch. Let's start with those first. Along the way, we'll watch whatever is extra. Hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sorry, I'm busy. Try someone else. <sighs> Excuse me. My name is Eleanor, and I'm an exorcist on patrol with the Abbey. I was wondering if I could solicit your honest opinion about how this town is being run. Oh, I didn't realize there was an exorcist with you. Yes, please tell the Abbey we want Lady Teresa back. Her governance was strict, it's true, but at least we could live in safety. Now, all the exorcists run off to the Faldi's ruins and leave us here in the lurch. They value some dusty, faraway ruins over the lives of the good, hardworking citizens here. It's just wrong. We've always been cooperative with the Abbey's demands, and now this is what we get in return. I... I see. The Abbey appreciates your, uh, candor. I'll pass your comments on to my superiors. Bruh. Alright. Is this an inn? Oh, nothing in here. Repent your evil deeds, sinner! <laughs> First it was the sailors, and then even a small girl caught the demon blight. I was sure it was going to start spreading through this town as well, but then after that incident, it just went poof that and disappeared. I guess I was you. expecting a little more after hearing how contagious it was. I wonder what really causes it. Who knows? I heard of this one village in East Gand where everyone caught it at once. It wiped out the entire town. <laughs> I hope the Abbey develops a cure quickly. I can't wait for the day where we can live without fear. It's all deed. Poor, poor Medisha. Are you a friend of hers? Yeah, she used to live just down the road from me. Medisha raised her daughter Diana all on her own. And then they up and murdered the girl. Damn. Murdered? By whom? The exorcists. Once Diana caught the demon blight, the damned Abbey exterminated her like a rat. How cruel. I felt just terrible, but I suppose there wasn't much else to be done with her. But Medissa, she hated the Abbey for what they'd done. So she barricaded herself inside the sanctuary. She just kept on screaming, all like, demons have feelings too. What happened after that? I wouldn't have been surprised to see her executed, but luckily, she was spared that much. An exorcist stopped the guard who was about to cut her down, said, Don't kill her, she's receptive. Receptive? Oh, dare you. I think that's their way of referring to her deep faith. Before all this, uh, she was area. a real devout lady. That was certainly kind of them. Medissa really cherished her daughter. Can't much blame her for blowing up like that. But the Abbey, they don't care so much about feelings. Reason is all that matters to them. They don't take kindly to people disrupting their order. <sighs> yeah, they about to get disrupted, all right. Hey, there's a geo thing right here. What is that up? I think that's up there. 
The geo thing is up there. Why is it on a building and not on the ground? That doesn't make sense, but okay. The geo tree is on a building. Out of all the places to be, you would think it would be like, you know, on the ground where, you know, where nature normally is, you know what I'm saying? But on a man-made fucking building. Alright, let's go get this. Might as well get it, it'll help us speed up things. There we got it, now we can ride out. I can't just jump off either, that's... That's fine. Jump! Crisscross cross will make you jump, jump, hey, hey, jump, jump. Skirt! Skirt! Alright. If you go north from Halibis, you'll come upon the Faldi's ruins, which are Abbey property. Oh, Mainly, yeah, that ruin it's used that as a checkpoint for hauling that ore that's extracted out of Mount yeah. Killerous. But between you and me, I hear the Abbey also uses it as a prison camp. A prison camp? Are they capturing demons? Heavens no! The demons they kill on sight. No, these prisoners are human criminals. Not long ago, this woman killed someone and locked herself up in the sanctuary. I hear she got hauled off to the camp. Why do you think the Abbey would use the ruins for a prison camp? Who knows? Maybe they need a place to deal out their harshest punishments. The Abbey's not known to be forgiving, after all. <laughs> uh, but these are just nasty rumors I heard. Of course, I don't believe a word of it. Sure you don't. Let's go to the end really quick. Yeah, we got a, yeah, we got a sub event up here. Yeah, man. Sub events. Wasting all kinds of times, man. Yeah, man. Waste more of my time, man. I'm riding the geo board inside the end, man. Yeah, man. Okay, where'd that skid at, though, man? Uh-oh, we're gonna get a flashback, aren't we? It's a book titled Words and Deeds of the Hero King. The king declared, My people, you must always live with great vigor and hold hope for the world and for our future. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it. Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. My people, you must live without hesitation. Hold hope in your hearts. Hold hope for tomorrow. Transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. Flashback. Lord Artorius, I have successfully translated all of the documents left by your predecessor. However, I have concluded that, for the time being, it is impossible to form pacts with all four Empyreans. As I feared. Not even my predecessor could achieve more than two. I suppose using the fifth Empyrean is my only option. Is that even acceptable? Doing so would require... I will do whatever needs to be done. I betrayed my teacher. I betrayed the mission he gave his life for, that he entrusted in my hands. For a time, I thought I could bear the weight of my sins and go on living, with Selica by my side. But now, she's gone. Yes. Man can turn reason into disorder, but also can we surpass it? Our true power is in transcending the possible to achieve the ideal. I must bring about the ideal world. I couldn't protect the people I loved, but this at least I will accomplish. Arthur? Huh? What is it, Velvet? Were you just talking to someone? No. I was just thinking out loud. Oh, okay. I, uh, finished making dinner. Tonight is prickle boar stew. Plenty of meat, but not too heavy. <laughs> Sounds great. Let's hurry on back home, then. I don't know exactly what all that means, but it kind of sounds nice. I suppose. Actually, it doesn't make much sense to me either. It's too dense for me. How she remember all that? How she remember all that though? For real, she couldn't hear the seraph at the time. So how she hear all that? Let's be real, dog. Where the bookshelf go? <laughs> the camera made it disappear. Blame it on the camera. 
All right, let's go to the bar. There might be something in the bar. Hey, there's two things in the bar, but right now, you know what I'm gonna do? All right, let's quick save and let's go ahead. Before we split this video, let's go ahead and uh, watch these two sub events. Hi, I was wondering if you'd let us put on a little comedy show. What do you say? Oh, no, sounds good to me. One? Just try <laughs> to keep it low key. Another I don't one? want to attract the Abby's attention. Ha, that's a tall order. Wherever we go, the boy and I have him rolling in the aisles. The boy? Wait, you mean me? I sure do. I'll play the straight man, you play the funny one. Don't sweat it. Even if you mess up, you'll be adorable. The audience will just lap it up. Did you memorize the script I wrote you? Yeah, I think so. Great, I knew you could do it. But oh, if you God. merely follow the script and adhere to its every word, you won't be very funny. You need to ad-lib in your own style. For you, that's buttering up the audience and winning them over. Ad-lib? I'm not sure I can do that. I have faith in you, kiddo. You're gonna discover a part of you that you never knew existed. Oh, Just God. focus on finding ways to charm our audience. Okay, I'll see what I can do. All right, then let's get this show rolling. Oh my God, I didn't expect this. <laughs> There. We're a boy and his witch, your partners in comedy today! Magic Kazam! We're still new to the comedy business, but we'll do our best to give you a memorable show. I'm Fee, the cute one, and this blustering witch is... Muggy Lou! Wait, who are you calling blustering? <laughs> Meow! S sorry I just suddenly felt like doing an imitation. An imitation? Like, of a cat? Not just any cat, a nearby cat. Meow! You're losing them. Time to go on our charm offensive. Roll with it, kiddo. Every slip up is just a new opportunity in disguise. <laughs> uh, see? It's supposed to be a pun on how cats sound and how near is pronounced. <laughs> I didn't actually hear a nearby cat meow like that or anything. He's explaining the joke? <laughs> Are you going crazy, Luffy Set? What does explaining a bad joke do? But you told me to ad-lib to try and win our audience over, didn't you? I figured maybe if I explained it to them, they'd get the joke and find it funny. <laughs> Just stop. Even if they get the joke that way, it's just going to be sad. I don't mind that. I'm not afraid of messing things up. I just want to make sure our audience feels valued. No, no, you have the right idea, but... I guess I should mention, Moggy Lou's the one who came up with the script. She just made me come and act it out. <laughs> <sighs> I don't care if it made the audience happy, you just sold me out! I can't work with you like this, no way! <laughs> <laughs> it in the end, it came out. It, it worked I'd out. I'd <laughs> say we got a lot of ad-libbing into our routine today. How was the show? <sighs> I'll just say one thing. You need a better writer. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> Lop is set, fucked it up, but it still worked out. Now we have demons rampaging through our towns. North Gans really had a string of bad luck. The weather's gotten even colder. Mercio's port is blocked by an ice Mercios. drift, and hardly anyone sails the North Seas anymore. But relief supplies have made it up here, right? It may fill our bellies, but not our hearts. Huh? If the Abbey truly wants to save this town, there's something we need more than food or gold. Lady Teresa. Oh, another Teresa fan. <sighs> if oh only I could God. be pierced once more by those fierce ice cold eyes. <laughs> Punish me, Teresa, my love! Wow. Can we make it so that he doesn't get any more supplies? <laughs> <sighs> Lady Teresa, my life is for you. Wow. But she only has eyes for her brother. <laughs> it's funny because it's kind of true. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, save the game, take a break. And once we come back, we'll be back with more Tales of Berseria. Oh.